Welcome to episode 52 in our series on the origins and meanings of Appalachian and Southern surnames. Before we get started, I wanted to say thank you for the well wishes and prayers that many of you offered on my behalf. My family appreciates it. I appreciate it. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. The hip replacement went well. At four weeks post-surgery, I'm feeling better than I did before the operation. Now, I'm looking forward to being able to ride my bicycle and my motorcycle as well as play some golf, work in the yard. Doing those things has been a challenge for me over the last 19 years as I've undergone nine joint and spinal surgeries. I am the $6 million man. I've got the bills to prove it. At any rate, each of the surnames that we'll cover today was requested by members of our YouTube community. To make our task more manageable, we're focusing on pre-Civil War families. That's the older families. That's because in the years following the Civil War, America entered the Industrial Revolution and thousands of different families moved from the South to the Rust Belt and also from Appalachia, while foreign immigrants settled across the country. On today's show, we'll investigate the origins and meanings of eight Appalachian and Southern surnames. To disentangle their origins, we'll look back to medieval Ireland, Wales, England, Scotland, Scandinavia, France, and Germany. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Number one, Schote or Schote. In either of these two spellings, we can trace the origin back to Essex, England. That stands for the East Sussex Kingdom of Medieval England. Its first use as a surname most likely applied to a dweller in the Chute Forest. That's C-H-U-T-E. I've not been able to find it among uh, traditional surnames of Ireland, Scotland, or Wales, so I think we're safe in calling Shote an English habitational surname. Number two, Todd. I must admit that when I read the request for Todd, my five years of teaching at Lincoln Memorial University flooded my mind with remembrances of Mary Todd Lincoln. You might recall that Lincoln's wife was born in Lexington, Kentucky on December 13, 1818. Ironically, she was born into a slave-owning family. Nevertheless, she was a strong supporter of her emancipating husband's work as the 16th president. The surname Todd is of Teutonic origin. That's Northwestern Germanic peoples. That included the Anglo-Saxons, the Frisians, the Jutes, and, uh, and the Old Norse language speakers. One can find several spelling variations of Todd in the medieval records. It originally meant a fox from the bush. While Todd is the typical spelling, T-O-D-D -D, that is, in England it's also spelled that way in smaller numbers in Ireland and Wales. I should point out that Todd has been in the Scottish records since the 1270s, so it has a lengthy presence in the old Bonnie land. Because of that, I think you'll need a paper trail to zero in on the origin or hearth of your line of Todd. But if I was a betting person and there was no hanky-panky in your family tree, I would think that Todd in Appalachia in the south is most likely of English or Scottish origin. That's because of migration flows. In either case, it had the same early meaning. Number three, Searcy. The surname Searcy ushers in memories of my days living in northwestern Arkansas. That's because there's a Searcy, Arkansas in White County, and an actor named Nick Searcy had a significant role in the 2016 movie Greater. Greater is a true story of Brandon Bullsworth. He was arguably the greatest walk-on football player in the history of the University of Arkansas. Go Razorbacks, and maybe even all D1 schools. He signed a contract with the Colts, but unfortunately he didn't get to play because, well, I won't give the, I won't give the plot away. Check it out. Greater is a good movie. The movie succeeds in being an inspiration and depressing at the same time. I do recommend it for those who enjoy movies with a prominent place for Christianity, sports, and true life events. With respect to the origin and meaning of Circe, there are several places in France that feature various spellings of the name, S-I-R-C-Y, you can see it here. So it's easy to see that Circe has French roots. Circe arrived in England with the Normans in 1066 and became established in Nottinghamshire. Unlike other Norman names, Circe didn't spread throughout the Isles. That encourages me to see the name as an Anglo-French or Norman, Norman, not Norman, Norman surname. Number four, Dixon. Although I know over 30 of the surnames in my family tree, 
I only receive a request for one of them about once a month, which kind of makes me a little sad, but anyway. They're all Southerners and they're all Appalachian people, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find them. But there are a lot of things, there are a lot of names, a lot of families across the South in Appalachia, folks. Thousands of them, different ones. Now, I'm happy to tell you that Dorcas Dixon was my triple great paternal grandmother. Dick is a nickname for Richard, so Dixon means the son of Dick or Richard. While McIsaac tells us that Dixon or Dixon is an English name, George Fraser Black argues that Dixon is a border Scots name, while Dixon with the X is associated with the English border country. No doubt they have common origins and probably somewhere back in the past related to each other. But because the border was fluid for several centuries, the border shifting back and forth up into Scotland, down into England, and so forth, the two spellings are the result of national loyalties. This is a shock to some people who contend that border populations didn't see themselves as part of a larger political entity that we call Scotland or England. Now, two things can be true simultaneously. A border British person can also be English or Scottish. Now, one can find either spelling in Ireland or Wales, but at the end of the day, spelling is the best clue to which side of the border their lines originated. I suspect that a paper trail might just confirm my suspicions. Number five, peoples. Folks, when I received this request, I just knew that it would lead me to a group of travelers that many folks call gypsies. We have a viewer down in South Carolina, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but she is uh, constantly talking to me about, about travelers. And so I thought maybe this would be an opportunity to tie into her traveling uh, past with, with our show. But I guess, well, let's just wait and see for a second. Anyway, for sports fans among us, the WBC heavyweight boxing champion is Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. He's absolutely a gypsy. Well, beyond that supposition, the only connection that I can find between peoples and the Gypsy King is Ulster, the nine northern counties in Ireland. After that, there are no real connections. In truth, Peoples is a Donegal Irish surname. Its spelling in Irish is... which sounds like the Gaelic word for people. Number six, Grace. One of my favorite gospel songs is Amazing Grace. It wasn't about some bloke's amazing wife, I can tell you that for sure. It was written in 1772 by John Newton, who lived from 1725 to about 1807. Now, Newton was a former Navy captain and slave trader turned preacher and abolitionist. Amazing Grace is one of a few Christian hymns that is used in both religious and secular settings. Whereas in Christianity, grace means unmerited favor or gift, the Norman French surname La Grosse has less auspicious beginnings. We often say that a talented dancer has physical grace or agility, but the first people named Grace were actually rather clumsy. It was a nickname. Well, as a French surname, it arrived in the Isles after the Norman Conquest in 1066. They came along with good old William the Conqueror. Despite people associating the word Grace with Scottish bagpipes, as a surname, it's not found among the traditional Scottish families. Grace became an Irish surname around the year 1200 when Normans introduced La Grosse into the Emerald Isle. At the end of the day, I think we're safe in calling Grace an English or Irish surname of deep Norman roots. Number seven, Aoc. Dating back to the days when Middle English was spoken, that's around 1150 to 1450 AD, Aoc emerged as a pet form of Adam. Adcock is a variant form of Acock. I was only able to find Acock and Adcock among the traditional surnames of England, so I would describe them as English surnames. That makes sense. Number eight, Harrington. At first glance, Harrington looks like your basic English surname, and it didn't take me long to determine that Harrington is indeed an English toponymic from a few places in central and northwestern England. Harrington is also found in the Irish counties Connacht and Kerry. In Ireland, though, it could have been adopted as an anglicized form of this Irish surname. Harrington doesn't appear among the traditional surnames of any other countries besides England and Ireland. So, a paper trail will be most helpful in tracking down the origin of your line of Harrington. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of our discussion. If you did, 
please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help. I invite you to check out all the videos on the Vantage Point. In addition to the Surnames of Appalachia and the South series, they cover a wide range of topics, including a recent upload on the Crusades. Yes, that's right, the Crusades. The material in that video is drawn from my book, Puritan Islam, that you can see on the shelf up here. So it provides a sober look at the pathological way in which some left-leaning Americans express guilt over the Crusades. If you're looking for an honest, historically accurate overview of the interactions between the, the West and Islamic countries, I think that episode will enrich you. If the man warrants it, I'll be back soon with another episode on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. I hope to see you then. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.